Hi guys, my name is Barton. Welcome to your second tutorial on ISO 8583. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to look at the config file. So go ahead and create a new class called isofield.java and add the following contents to it. So this is going to be our configuration file. Okay, so in my implementation, I am treating everything as an ISO field. More specifically, rather more generally, I'm treating everything as a field. So every ISO field has the following. Okay, now remember, an ISO field has something called an ID. Okay, so an ID is uh, an integer that I am going to use to denote the position of a message rather of a field inside the message so for example the MTI is going to be field 0 so the ID of an MTI is going to be 0 so I know that when you look at Wikipedia uh, you won't see the MTI right here okay here it just says the second bitmap is field one and all that so in my particular implementation I am treating everything as a field so the whole message is a field okay the MTI is a field all right the primary bitmap and the secondary bitmap I'm, I'm referring to both as field one okay so here the ID is going to represent that okay the length is going to be used for fixed length fields so if I go to Wikipedia and uh, highlight a field like the processing code okay so the processing code is field 3 right and it says that it's a numeric field whose length is exactly 6 okay so that 6 is going to be stored here all right and the max length is going to be used for variable length fields so if I go to a field like field number 32 it's a numeric field whose length can go up to 11 so this 11 is what is going to be stored here okay now the CLS is a fully qualified class name of a field okay so we haven't created these classes yet but we'll see that in a future video the pattern uh, is right here okay this is just an enum that represents constants for what appenders and prependers I will use okay so for example a field like uh, a field like field 4 which is the amount is supposed to be 12 long so if my amount is less than 12 then I can use one of these appenders or prependers to make the amount 12 digits long, right? So, more specifically, I would use the zero prepender because if an amount doesn't have 12, 12 digits, then I would prepend zeros up until uh, the amount becomes 12 digits long, right? So, that's uh, what this actually padders are for, okay? Now the description is, well, that's just the description of the field. And then we have encoding. So the encoding, we have two encodings. So one is the value encoding. Okay, so remember that every value has to be encoded either in ASCII or in BCD. Okay, so if it is BCD, then each and every digit or character is going to occupy one byte. Okay sorry not if it's bcd if it's ascii every character is going to occupy one byte okay if it is binary then each and every two characters each every two characters are going to occupy one byte so if you use binary the content is going to be half as long okay uh, we also have encoding for the length now the length encoding can either be in ASCII or in BCD. Okay, so the same goes for the length encoding. Now notice here that I have a, an, a list of ISO fields within an ISO field. So as I said, I am treating everything as a field. Okay. 
so an ISO field if I treat the whole message as an ISO field then remember that the message has fields within it so an ISO field can have many fields if I show you an example of an ISO message here this is an echo message so I would treat this as an ISO message right and now inside this ISO message I have field 0 which is my MTI then I also have field 1 which is encoded in binary this is a bitmap okay now i also have other fields here but i can't be sure what fields are there and what fields are not there okay rather i have to pass the bitmap for me to know which field is actually present here okay so my point is this message is a field but that particular field has other fields within okay hence my list here okay now that's it for the fields I also have a default constructor then I also have a constructor with fields uh, from there these are regular getters and setters so let me scroll all the way down so you can see exactly what it is there's nothing special here this is just regular getters and setters okay so this is the configuration file all right see nothing special just get us and set us so in the next video we're going to abstract now access to our fields using interfaces so we're going to be creating two interfaces one is going to be an interface called field which is just going to represent a normal field and another is going to be a compound field which is going to represent a field that has other fields okay so that's it for this video guys uh, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, watch out for the next video thanks guys